Hello. Hello. How are you, dear? Good. How are you? Good afternoon. <laughs> yes. Yes. Hey. Hey, Michelle. Why are we? Why are we what? I'm hearing an echo. On you. Yeah, why? Um, oh, my gosh. <laughs> what in the world? That was that SOS thing. Somehow I always hit it. <laughs> All right. I'm, I'm having an echo. She's just making sure we're awake. <laughs> and she's gone. How's everybody doing in chat? So we are going to go over some pictures I found today or yesterday that I feel like nobody's really touched on of evidence being taken out of Brian's apartment. And I don't know why no one's talked about it, but we're going to. Um, let's see. I'm just going to give it a couple minutes. Um, I'll pull this up. What? Can you hear me? Yeah, I can hear you. Okay. Yeah. My neck Are we already coming. starting the can you hear me stuff? <laughs> yeah. You're not muted. You can see there's no mute. I can hear you. All right. I'm going to share my screen. And I am going to just discuss some of this that was taken out of his apartment. So give me one second to pull this up. And then we will... Keep an eye on Twitter on Brian Enton and WFLA to see when the hearing starts because they are not live streaming it because their law there is no one can be in the courtroom live streaming. So it's really just going to be us talking about um, what they're talking about. So if anyone is interested in that, but here we go. I am going to pull this up. Let's here. Present. Quick clicking. Share screen. Are you ready? I'm going to share. You go, girl. All right. All right. So this is something that I found very interesting, and I don't know if anyone else noticed this. They were taking this out of his apartment. This is a brand name that sells booties for your feet. So he had a box of those. Brea! So these are booties, which everyone was wondering how he got in and out. I am going to guess from these. This is what you put on your feet to make sure when you're going in someplace and you don't want your feet shown or touching or contaminating. Exactly. And that's exactly what they are. You can Google them yourself. They're feet covers. And then the other thing that I thought was interesting is these right here. And then, which I think are covers that you put on and zip up over your clothes. And I will show you. And line sells them in gray. Yep. I'll show you. Um, let me get into that one. No, because it's with evidence, Crystal Burke. What? They wouldn't have their items that they are wearing in with the evidence. No. I'll show you the whole picture in a minute, but let me just show you again. On um, this page, this one as well. So you can see him again here. Do you see this? Yep. And you see it's more like a bluish gray. Now I'm going to show you. This was all taken out of his apartment. Let's see. And if there's anything someone wants me to reshow, 
like so i'll show you here this is them why are they barking sorry my dogs are barking if you hear them so here's this this is them coming out of his apartment here's the people i'm not quite sure why this guy doesn't have gloves on in my opinion they should but i mean he's carrying the evidence thing but they should she's wearing gloves it looks like but i'm not quite sure why they're not they should always be wearing gloves i guess i'm i mean she i think she even has some covers on her feet actually but now I'm going to show you what I think they are, those things. I think they're these. That's what I think. Yep. That's what I found last night. Yep. <laughs> And these are retardant coveralls, but they also keep blood, fluids, they're non-flammable, they're all kinds of stuff to keep stuff out. And I think this is what we've seen in those pictures. Now, get a good look at this, because I'm going to re-show you the picture and see what you think, if that looks similar to the color. Does everyone see it? Yep. Okay. Let's go back to that one. I don't know why no one else is talking about this. I truly do think that that is them, you know. I do too, right here. Yeah, yeah, that's it's got to be. In this bag. Yeah, and when you order through, I mean, they're one, almost the get, same color. Yeah, and you get a number, you know, a huge amount. Mm -hmm. When you order through, what them, do you guys so... think? Anybody opinions? If anyone thinks this is, who else is in here? Anybody think this is? Yeah, I think I think to be honest, because they're more protective, Heather Brat, I think they keep out more than just the average. I mean, that's just my opinion. They but appear to be more close to the skin and a little thicker than the yeah, white. They're, thicker. they're more durable. So I think they just yeah. are more pr protective. And I mean, I think this is a possibly this is another bag of them and i mean look how they carry them out right with the the covers for your feet and he can argue this and say yeah i had that stuff i'm in the program and that very well could be but it's also a coincidence that you could also use them if you want to go and unalive for people in their sleep with a knife so it just is kind of suspicious that he has both it looks to me at least i right. know for the feet covers because that's exactly what these are and i only noticed it because i work in the medical field and i instantly seen that box and i was like why is no one talking about this got anything else all i keep hearing is i caught i i agree noah i just think they're all so hyped up and sometimes when they're just hyped up and want to hyper focus on him and they and that's the thing is like everyone's been so invested in this case and just picking apart everything but then clear as day we have these evidence pictures that explains a lot and no one's talking about it which is crazy to me so I just thought I would share that. I thought it was interesting because I haven't seen anyone else say anything about this, which is crazy to me. Crazy, crazy. And yeah. I'm gonna stop. We, we, we thought that he wore total body protection. Yeah, that was our, that's, that was our thoughts for us. And then I also want to clear up one other big fat rumor 
So I'm going to share this. This is from the Corner Club. For everyone saying they kicked him out of the bar that night, suspect was not and has not been here. No one was removed from the bar the evening of the incident. Stop calling us. Well, that's where a lot of these people that speculate the wrong way, basically, well, you know, he was there. There was some, you know, because there's so much drinking. So it's like an assumption that somebody was thrown out because it is a college mm -hmm. town. But I mean, that's you know. all we've heard. Yeah. Somebody was thrown out. Somebody was thrown out. He was kicked out. Well, here it's right from Corner Club. No one was kicked out. So, uh, Sydney, the only imprint that would be left would be the actual outline not um, the actual full-blown imprint of the shoe, just the outline, Correct. if anything. And I really think that he wore them in, but I think he put new ones to go out. Yeah. Because, I mean, there's nothing, even if he took them off, he there's no, you know, obvious footprints that they've talked about. So, I mean, and it did snow the next day, but I don't know what the weather was like that night into that morning I mean, supposedly they did find shoe imprints but, but we don't know if you have a booty on you can just see the shape yep. and the size yeah he had a whole box of them and i think that th i'm gonna be honest i think he was there more than just that night i think he had been there checking things out multiple times as it when he was you know, when people were sleeping or people weren't home, I think he was there checking on things and seeing ways to get in. What I really thought was kind of crazy is this. When we thought they wouldn't accommodate him, but they are. I think for now they're going to accommodate him no matter what. Well, if he does have a diagnosis of severe OCD, that is a medical reason. So I think he possibly could get away with that. Because that would be a medical reason in my opinion. But... Let's see. And then we'll just share the creepers pictures. Alleged creeper from today and I just want to go over this because I mean let's all be real here I was not expecting this when I seen these hi Nicolina thank you thanks Nicolina well if if they don't accommodate him then that could be grounds you know like prejudice yeah that's I mean he has a he has rights, medical things. Like, just because you're in prison or wherever, if you have medical issues, they still have to give you your medications. They can't just, like, cut you off of, you know, things because you're in prison. You still, and they've been way more lenient now with this because there's so many protesting and rights activists and all of this stuff that they don't want to even attempt to not do that but does everyone else think he looks way bigger than we anticipated i know they say he's six feet tall but when you see him next to these cops he just looks giant and look let's talk about those eyes for a minute <sighs> staring into your soul imagine waking up to that oh my god and i was curious because they did say he was in boxing if that's how his nose got broke could be because yeah it looks really bad yeah when they said he I knew he was big by them just saying he was six foot i mean i mean his body's not big obviously he looks ripped because he's got a bulletproof vest bulletproof. on but, yeah but i'm just saying like i mean his arms and stuff don't look i'm just saying height wise it just i don't know i just when i see those pictures of him he just looks like you know this little skinny scrawny dude but then you see him next to these cops and it's like yikes he is big <laughs> Yes, he is, for sure. Let's 
go back to that picture that we said yikes to that he literally is his twin where is it at here we go because let's not forget this <laughs> It's I almost, still want to be a fly on the wall in that court, you know, in the courtroom. Oh, yeah. And when it comes 15 more minutes, we got, I will, we will be going over and I'll share. We can share some of them streaming. We just, you just can't constantly share them because they will quite copy strike you. But um, we're going to be sharing some live coverage of them outside. And I think the hearing will be um, super quick if he's going to say yes. And I think they're going to take him right from there and fly him right, right back. I wouldn't be surprised if they have the hearing tonight. I'll really be shocked if they don't. Because, I mean, we've seen them where they've done them late at night. Because they're going to want to get charges on him. And I will keep an eye, too. I have both the court sites open. So if anything changes, we can see that as well. And I, I feel that the... They're gonna from Idaho. They're gonna be they're gonna be there to pick him up, and he'll be in Idaho by morning. He'll be in Hi Idaho by tonight. They said seven hours, seven eight hours to get back. So, I mean, I don't know. I literally want to just like post that corner club thing on our page. I wish we could, but not yet. So we got to get them likes and subs up so we can put this stuff out when we see it. Because we've been holding on to those evidence pictures all night for today. Um, let me just see if anything has changed on these. Um, let's see. Um, nothing yet. I don't see anything yet for either of them. Oh, so 26 minutes ago, um, Brian Enton tweeted, going inside courtroom now for Brian Colbert hearing cameras and live tweeting not allowed, but we'll update here on News Nation when it ends. So they're not even allowing them to have anything. Wow in the courtroom. So it's really just going to be what they uh, decide to, you know, talk about. But I do think it's going to be pretty brief. I hope so. I do. I don't know if you guys seen this here. I'll, oh, I'll share this. I'm oh, not that big. I'm not sure if anyone's seen this yet, but... I just want to hear, you know, he's in the process of being transported. That's oh, what I, I want to hear. Without it going way back, I'm sure. Let's see. I'm sure you guys probably all seen this on the news today, but just in case. So this is just when he arrived at the courthouse. Can you guys hear that? Yep. Just him getting out. This is where I was like, whoa. Hey, how are you doing? How are you doing? People oh, not happy. Yeah. So I can imagine that the tension is going to be like cut with a butter knife and her dad is going to be there. Kaylee's dad and family are going to be at the hearing today. So I'm sure they will also show him coming in and out and probably I would guess he's probably going to talk to reporters when he comes out as well would be my guess but I don't know um I'm not sure if any of the other victims families will be there Sydney I know he said he was going to be there and I know that his parents and his sisters will be there so I'm not yeah, sure. I don't know. If, yeah, if the other families will be there today because they're I, in. Yeah, basically, they're not there. They're not in um, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, or Pennsylvania. Duh. 
<laughs> I think Philadelphia. My dad had worked in Philadelphia. I can't remember. <laughs> um, he's uh, the Kaylee's. I mean, Kaylee's dad is the one that's going to be there, I believe, because I mean, he's been the most vocal. Yeah, for sure. And I pray to God he doesn't do anything, anything. Like to like scream and yell and go at him. I think he knows better. Anything. I think, yeah, I think he knows if he does that, you know, he won't be allowed in court hearings. And I don't think he will. But I don't know how you would control yourself because for me. I wouldn't be able to. I would literally want to like, I don't know, <laughs> not be so nice, I think. No, I like, would be. I would kind of representing no. Maddie's family as well, because he says our girls when he talks, and then they had their celebration of life together. I just think that he kind of speaking for all of them, in my opinion. But it's just sad to me they they just were like, I don't know, the perfect you know friends and. It's just insane to me. And I really want to know if he was connected somehow or if he's been there or if they interacted other than just him being a stalker. I'm interested. And I know when his, um, his questionnaire thing came out, his survey, and he was just posting... Like, I just thought it was, like, for anybody, but I didn't realize it's actually for criminals. Oh, yeah, because the questions that he was asking. Yeah. But I was just wondering, like, where else did he share that? Uh, I'm kind of torn. Heather, what is this? Hold on, I'm trying to see. She sent me something that I can't see real good, so I'm going to zoom in. Um, is this his arrest affidavit? Oh, just him waving his... Oh, the criminal complaint. Here, let me see if we can. I'll share my screen so you guys can see what I'm looking at as well. Heather Bratt shared us. So let's see if I can make this a little bigger. Hopefully I can or not. I can't because it's in my, maybe, yeah. Okay, I'll just zoom on it. Can you guys read it? I can't read, period, because, you know, I'm blind. It's just his criminal complaint. It says, in that or on about said date, the defendant have been charged with the commission of any crime from another state or having been convicted of a crime in another state and having escaped from confinement or having broken the term of his or her bail probation parole, the defendant has been located within or believed to be within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. So it's just his um, just his arrest when they arrested him. And I'll show you the other page. It's just when they first took him in in Pennsylvania. Thanks, Heather. Yeah, see his eye color says blue in all of his pictures, blue. But then you see his picture of him arrested and literally they're black. It's yes. Just, it's crazy to me. I was just showing them here like how insane, like even just this picture. I mean... Yeah, oh, that's such a creepy picture. I don't even want to put that up. It just, I don't know. I will, but it just, he, he literally creeps me out. I can't. This one is just like, scares my soul. 
But like you can see his eyes are clearly blue. I mean, that's just, he looks so thin in this picture. Ooh, I can't. And then I'm going to show you, like, I'm going to see if I can do a side-by-side -side here. I don't know if I can because I don't have them next to each other in here, but I will see. Oh, well, we can play the presser after. Huh? We can play the presser after. Yeah. So, like this one. Yeah, let me know when we're getting close because I'm not paying attention. Like, look at this. They are completely blue. Blue, blue, blue. Blue. And then you go to... Where is that at? Okay, I don't want... I want to stop this. Oh, what is this? She's just sharing all kinds of stuff. Who just shared that? That would have been Brett. Oh, here, I'll share this. Why don't you tell me when you what you were talking about? <laughs> it's like, okay. So here's this. Advisory today. State police to hold news conference. Which state police? Idaho or the Pennsylvania? It's Pennsylvania. They're gonna hold a press conference. Taken into custody, emergency response. So they're going to hold a news conference at 4.30. So an hour after. So it'd be 3.30 our time. Media contact. So it's just pretty much. Where are they going to be holding that at? Oh. Brett, can you drop me that link in Slack on this paper to the media contact? Is that her link? It, right here. The press conference will be available via live stream at this, this link right here. Can you drop that in Slack? Or in chat even? I don't think we're going to go too far in chat that we're going to lose it. <laughs> you can just do it in chat. And then that way we can just copy and paste and go down there. But I want to see if there's any new updates on Twitter. I got to refresh. I'm glad oh, 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 here's something. Ready? Hold on. Share screen. Window. Share. Okay, so here he is going in. Here, I'll rewind it. It's going into court. Oh, they got like ARs and everything. Ooh! My nerves, my nerves can't handle it. I'm freaking out. I like have anxiety. I can't imagine how their families feel. Oh, girl. Let's see what Ryan has. Did you play our disclaimer? Yeah, I played it. Oh, I didn't see it. Do I play it again for you? No. Yeah, I played it right when we started. Here you go. Here's our disclaimer, <laughs> fair use. In case anyone was wondering. Yeah, I played it right after our intro. Oops. Bye, Michelle. Okay. Oh my God, that's so creepy. So it's gonna start any second. How fast do you think it's gonna be? I don't know. I mean, all it is is just that for the extradition, right? Yeah, they'll just have to ask him his name. Thanks, Michelle. That's all Trixie's doing. <laughs> our intro or outro or 
background. <laughs> That's all Trixie. She's the crafty one over here. If you guys want to watch crafts or order stuff, she has, um, what is this? She has, um, Trixie's Creations, the number four and the letter U on YouTube. She does really good, um, tumblers, I do tumblers, cups. mugs. I got a mouse pad. Mouse pads, yep. Yeah. Key fobs. Yeah, she does a lot of stuff. And all kinds of paper crafts. And we will one day when we're talking about crafts, which she was going to do today, but um, go over some of her stuff that she makes because she does a really good job. I just get too much feedback. I got, was getting too much feedback trying to use my phone. And I think like for them saying he was wearing gloves in Washington, I believe he probably was, but I don't think he was in Pennsylvania because he thought he was safe and sound at home with his parents. I feel he was very confident. I'm going to share this again just in case anyone wants to see. And we're just going to play that quick. Yeah, let it play. It's just a little bit. This is all it is with him walking in. That's all, they, that's all it is. He's in court. It just repeats. I can just imagine the energy going on in there. I just keep refreshing because they literally tweet. Tweet, tweet, tweet every two minutes. And so this is coverage from WFLA and News Nation. We love Brian Enton. He is, I don't know how he gets from place to place so quickly, but he does. He does. Um, one minute, one day he's in Idaho. The next day he's in Pennsylvania. It's like he's, I bet he's got lots of miles going on. Uh, let's see. I don't see anything else. I mean, I don't really know. I'm not going to really go on anyone else's thing because I feel like they're all there. So if we're going to get anything, it's going to be this. And then that, um, uh, that link, as soon as Brett links that, we will do that presser. And they said, what time is that at? Geez, in an hour? In an hour. Oh, my word. What are we talking about for an hour? <laughs> <laughs> Anybody got anything to say? <laughs> Questions? Anything yeah. we can answer? Um, I'm going to put these pictures back up. Where? I don't see it, Brat. It's posted in where? Oh, does she put it in Slack? Oh, okay, perfect. Thank you. Sorry. <laughs> Noah, what do you want to talk about? You got some questions? Dis out some questions for Trixie. I'm going to mute for one minute, but Trixie, you can answer questions or talk about something. Sure. I'll be right back. Nothing, Noah. So who feels 100% this is definitely the man? You know, he's going to try the whole, wasn't me. I was there previously. That's why my DNA is there. I really feel he's going to try to get out of this. Hey, Cotton Candy. Thanks for coming. 
I think there might have been at least one more person that's helping him. I don't think so. I really don't think there's another person. I truly think it was just him. I know everyone is live right now, Cotton Candy. Oh, my God. Well, I think they all just want the the info right away. But unfortunately, we're not going to find out anything until they start tweeting because they're not even allowed to, like, tweet or anything in the courtroom, which kind of stinks. Cotton Candy, I want to know, did you, you do think there's someone else? Hmm. I want to know if you've seen this, Cotton Candy. I'm going to show you. Tell me if you've seen this. Hold on. I'm going to share my screen. Have you seen this? What they're taking out of his apartment? The box of booties? And what I think these are covers? You line covers? For your body and i'll show you why i think that but these are definitely the booties coming out of his apartment no i've i've not heard that there was other people in the car with him i haven't heard that one no they always just said <laughs> occupant or occupants but i think these are what is in that box hold on let me just i don't know why i'm like so big here we go those covers and those booties. I think it's this and the booties. Same color looking. I feel he has, but I'm not 100%. It was human that he has killed before. But if he's vegan, he's not killing animals. If he's no true, killers true. start with animals, that doesn't mean nothing. Yeah, but they don't, if you're a true vegan, you don't eat meat because it's animals. So I cannot see him killing animals. No, he could have, he could have gone to veganism because of the fact that he has killed. And it gross, you know. I don't know. They said he's been that way like a very long time. So I'm not sure. It's interesting though. I don't think he's killed animals. I really don't. I think if he's killed anybody, it's been somebody that nobody would miss. The when well, he's that, traveling. If it was a human, yeah, it would have been like a homeless or something. The seller said there was someone waiting in the car when he purchased the knife. But that doesn't mean anything. I mean, he could have went and purchased it and not told the person what he was getting. I mean, I don't feel like, yeah, I don't know if anyone else... I'm sure all, you guys have all seen the knife picture that he bought on Marketplace. But then I'm hearing that it's... December. That that's possibly not even true, though. But that's his... his, but, his but that's his... Um, hold on. That's his Venmo. You can't just make up a Venmo. I don't know. It's shared to you. It's made from your account. This is his, this is the knife. And this is his Venmo. Here's a knife. And it shows, where is his thing? Right here. Brian Kohlberger, $350 for the knife. How is that made up? Do you know what I'm saying? Mm -hmm. And it's Venmo. So, I don't know. What are your guys' thoughts? Oops. Get out of there. Anybody? I don't, I don't believe his dad is involved either, but no. I think his dad knows something. Like, Not fully, but something. My thing is, how did his dad not, I mean, picking him up December 17th, how did his dad not know they're looking for this car? 
and asking everybody who drives this car to come forward so they can rule you out. No, the knife has never been found. They have not released that the knife has been found. It was not found at their last press conference or their last interview. Yeah, I agree, Con Canny. Yes, that is crazy to me too. Yeah, he's got the same almost as BTK. No, they know that's what's used by autopsy. They said it was a fixed blade knife. And from like what her dad has said, it was like rips and gouges, not just, which to me, that would explain that curve and that knife for gouges and rips. I mean, I don't know. Um, I'm just checking on these other things to see if there's anything. I know right now Brian's not going to be tweeting because he's in the courtroom. So you will know the minute it's over because he will come out and tweet instantly. And he went in going inside courtroom now, and that was 50 minutes ago. So let's see if there's any comments on here. Does anyone know how to watch News Nation online? So you can just click on News Nation, but... I mean, he's, I feel like he's going to tweet about it. It says there will be updates here and on News Nation. So he will be updating on Twitter the minute they come out. So I'm keeping track here. I'm like refreshing every two minutes. I don't know. We'll play this again, see if anyone has watched this. Let's see. Here we go. So this is just him going into court. <laughs> no, well, it's weird because today is also the day where they pick the speaker of the house. <laughs> That's so weird that it's the same day as this hearing. <laughs> Noah, he's so funny. Oh, I, I agree. News Daddy will definitely be going live outside the courthouse right after. And I'm going to guess as well, because her family have interviewed, like they've interviewed her family and talked to them so many times that I think um, they will go, they will, he will probably interview them if they're there outside. And ask them like how it felt to see him, their reactions. I'm sure he's going to interview them. 100%. Because that's just Brian Enton. Is that me? Yep, I'm here. I'm what? listening to you. You're talking. I'm not going to interrupt you. What are you doing that's all that noise? Oh, that noise? Yeah. That's the ejector pump for the sump pump. Oh. Can't I can't do nothing about that. No, I know. Let's see. We're just seeing if there's anything else that we could. Oh. So here's something. We'll go here. Hold on. I will screen share this. This is let me just make it a little bigger, possibly. And this is just the beginning. Oh, it is almost. Oh, there's a door open. Already? Okay, we're gonna. How do I silence this? Oh, here. I don't want sound. So this is just him going into the courtroom. A little bit longer of a walk for him. Just look at him. I think he just he almost like has a smirk to me. Is it just me? <laughs> Well, he thinks he studied all this, that he's he's good. I, mean, I get feel away like with right this. here, 
when he's looking, look at him looking too to the side. <laughs> you like how I just paused it on that. But like right here, I just look at that. Was that not a smirk? Look. And then he looks to the side. Boom. You better keep looking, buddy. I don't know. He is Sydney. He's very confident. He thinks he's going to get away with it. You know, mm -hmm. he studied all this. And... Yeah. It's, it's almost scary. I mean, and the thing is, like, he was living, and I just heard this, but he was... Oh, 42 seconds ago, he tweeted, Brian Kohlberger waived his extradition hearing. He had to sign a waiver in court. The judge explained to Kohlberger the charges against him in Idaho and that he was voluntarily allowing authorities to transfer him to Idaho. So he signed the waiver. So he must be out. It was 42 seconds ago. I don't, should I share the, my screen? Um, just what he said. So right here, 42 seconds. He waived his extradition hearing. He had to sign a waiver in the court. Judge explained to him the charges against him and that he's volunteering, allowing authorities to transfer him. So it's already over. That's pretty so, quick. <laughs> yeah, I figured it would be. I mean, it's just an extradition hearing. Yes, people are already saying he waived it. So um, let's see what they have on here. Um yeah, they haven't put anything else for him on WFLA. I don't know. I mean, he obviously feels confident enough that he just waived extradition. If he really wanted to mess with them, he could have stayed there. Um, That's why I think he thinks he's going to get out of this, you know. And then some of the comments people wrote just saw walking back out of the courtroom. He looks terrified, almost like he was holding his breath. Um, so I'm going to guess he, once he's out of the courtroom, he's going to probably address some more here in a minute before they take him back. Because I have a feeling it's going to be, I mean, like what they just said, allowing authorities to transfer him to Idaho. So I think they're going to do it immediately. I think he's going to go back to the jail and they're going to meet, or the prison, and they're going to meet him there. And they're going to take him right to Idaho. So they will be tonight for sure. So I'm going to watch court documents. And if they do update something with the court documents or release his... Um, stuff for the hearing like just like the evidence and stuff i will go live to share it even if it's just me or her just so we can read to what people say i signed up for the court site so we'll be able to yeah keep an eye on that i'll watch it all throughout the night so so far nothing else yet what time did they say they're going In like 45 minutes. Ew. That's a long time. I know. 45 minutes? Yep. I'm just seeing. I'm refreshing. I muted her. <laughs> <laughs> she's 
she's got so much background noise. I don't know. It sounds like she's plunging the sink. Jerk. <laughs> you sound like you were plundering the I sink. I can't help it. It's the injector pump that's in the room. <laughs> I'm like, is she literally washing dishes or plunging the sink right now? No, I'm just <laughs> sitting here. Uh, I hate the thing. I know, me. right? I hate it. Trixie's noises for sure. <laughs> when we're on live at night, we're all talking. I'm so mean. I'm always like mute because <laughs> she'll be like rustling in chips, banging cabinets, doing dishes, rattling pans, and we can barely hear. <laughs> oh I hate. God. I hate just sitting still. Yeah, we mute. know. <laughs> I'm always <laughs> like, all right, mute, and then she mutes. And then we just all talk and she's just dead silent. <laughs> oh, God, it's hilarious. But we love you. Deal with it. I know. We got to have someone up. And all my noises. <laughs> oh, goodness. Hey, can you search in a new tab and see if there's anything on News Nation? Okay. Other than just him. Yeah, right. Her laundry's loud. Like everything, she cracks me. It's up. my head. Well, when I was on my phone earlier, you said it wasn't loud. It's just no. I think it's my earbuds. Yeah, makes everything so much more intense. And when I and that's usually when I'm on my my earpods. So like I hear it so much more intense. And it's like sometimes I'm like, oh my gosh, I can barely even hear. Um, let me see here. Come on, Mr. Enten. Refresh, refresh. Let's yeah, see. I'm not finding my News Nation site. I'm not finding anything. They're not covering it. Uh, it's newsnationnow.com. Because he hasn't said anything. So I wonder if he's talking to family right now. I bet he is. I can't not see him talking. But I'm literally going over and over and over. Oops. Oh. <laughs> she gives us background and music to him. <laughs> oh, she cracks me up. Yeah, they're not putting anything else on. Um, on uh, WFOA. Hmm, I don't know. Who's all in here? Just all of us. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> well, I mean, like all the bigger channels are all live right now. Yeah, I'm not seeing anything anywhere right now. Mm -mm. Well, I don't know. I don't have anything else to show. Do we just want to end this one and then just go pop live when they're going to release it? Could. Um, let me just check this again. I just don't want to just keep these people just chilling here. Let's see. Um... I think the one only one that's really live is WFLA. Are they saying anything? I'm waiting for an ad. Okay, there we go. They just mute. TV Buno is I, on there. And yeah, yeah, it's not walking, on his Twitter, but they just have him walking. They're walking Brian out. Oh, they're walking him out. Why haven't they updated that on their Twitter? He's walking past a, a elevator right now. That's him walking in. Door. I don't know. Yeah, that's him walking in. That's the same one I shared, isn't it? Is it? Yeah. If it isn't, it's back, then it's the opposite, you know, views. 
Interesting. I'm surprised they haven't updated it on Twitter, though. Hey, I can hear that. Oh, apparently he made eye contact with his family and nodded at them. Oh, really? That's what they're saying. Well, I wonder if he's allowed to have any. So am I, Brad. I'm like literally click, clicking refresh, refresh, refresh. Um, it said he made eye contact with his family. With his family, not at them. It was all in there. Yeah, they just keep looping uh, them walking. Yeah. Yeah, what's he talking about it, though? What's he saying? That's, you know, why say he's going to live swing it on his thing? If it's not? We can't play that. He's just talking. I know he's just talking about, uh, I guess people are asking questions and he's got some guy, Josh Benson on. Yeah, Josh so. Benson. He was covered, him and him covered a lot of the Gabby Petito. Yeah, they're just a answering questions right now. It's his co-host. Yeah, she said mute tricks. <laughs> I already told her, Brat. We don't want to be in trouble. No, I turned the volume off. Yeah, down but I computer. am live I'm streaming. I'm going mm -hmm. to live. I'm going to live stream the press conference, though. Oh, yeah. It showed him walking out. No. I don't know if I want to go to. So this one, I'm not sure if he's walking out or walking in. Because it is like the opposite on the screen from what I'd seen. I'm going to mute because I don't want it to play. What do you think? Are you seeing it? You want me to share this? No, I'm going to read this from Brian Enton. Oh, go ahead. It says, Brian Kohlberger waived his extradition hearing. He had to sign a waiver in court. The judge explained to Kohlberger the charges against him in Idaho and that he was voluntarily allowing authorities to transfer him to Idaho. Kohlberger told the judge he is not on any medication. So there you go. That would impact him making the decision. The judge said he has to be sent to Idaho within 10 days. He came into court and made eye contact with his family sitting in the front row. He nodded at them. His mom cried and his sister comforted the mom. A deputy brought her tissues. So he is literally tweeting every three, four minutes. That was four minutes and ago. I get, I get that for the, you know, the mom. But yeah, that's child. his family. I mean... I, People can't blame them that he's a monster if he did this because exactly. I mean, and yes, you miss things because you don't want to believe your child's capable of something like that. Right. Um, but and I mean he's an adult too. You know, 28 oh, years oh. old. Come on. Yeah. I mean, so, I mean, I, I just feel like people shouldn't blame the family because I think that's terrible to do. I would protect my son as well. 
would I be proud of what he did? Absolutely not. But at the end of the day, it's still her son. Right. And I, exactly. no one's going to feel that way. And everyone's entitled to their own opinion. But that's how I would be. So I don't know. It, it has been publicized a lot, but I'm going to honestly tell you, I mean, here, I don't know, the news is on all the time upstairs, and it hasn't really been, outside of little snippets, it's not been really played. Widely covered, no. I, I seen no. it on our news, but more so, like, after he was arrested. It was yeah, on, so like our news station but honestly no. if his parents didn't get aren't into social media mm -hmm. really and don't really watch the news religiously i don't know if they would have even suspected mm -hmm. the only thing is like though the dad going there i'm sure there was stuff all over the place so but i mean i don't know but yeah, I, I don't think it was, I think it's going to be more public now. Right. Especially with him being in Pennsylvania, you mm -hmm. know, now it will. I don't think before. It was I just really feel there. like Idaho too, especially with like the Daybells. I feel like the, those guys really cover News Nation and East Idaho News. They really cover their cases there. Like Brian Enton's a beast. And he will cover this every day and as long as there's new information. Right. I just keep re stretching. Um I mean, they don't get to really pick who they pick as jurors. I mean, they have to agree, but they'll pick a little bit of everything. Okay, I'm not going to watch WFLA because they literally are not updating us with anything. Um, I'm just trying to read some of these chats. See if there's anything that people are talking about. Yeah, people are asking questions like, will he stay in Idaho forever? <laughs> That's where he committed the crime. Yeah. You know, the only way they may possibly ever transfer him once he's imprisoned is because if he's having issues and, you know, threats inside the prison. Yeah, he wasn't thinking how people are saying how this would affect his mom. I hear she's a really sweet lady. Yeah. So, I mean, and that's the thing, like, just like BTK's daughter, she's a victim as well as the victims. I mean, now she has to live with her father is a serial killer. I mean, she was crying, saying like, you know, that this professor is teaching about her dad to other people and now wonders if, you know, he had any contact with her dad. And I couldn't imagine having to live with that, knowing my dad is a serial killer. Right. But she, you know, she takes it in stride and she, I'm sure I'm proud of her that she came forward and out and talked about this. Um, she, was crying. I mean, she's distraught over it and I can't imagine. Can't imagine. Um yeah, this Sydney, they said they're going to release it as soon as he gets into uh, Idaho and he's in front of the judge. They said it will be released. Rather they ch if they change that, I don't know, but when the chief did the presser, he did say um, as soon as he's back in front of the Idaho judge and charged that they will release the affidavit. So we'll know what, like, why or what they arrested him on, like his probable cause. 
I honestly, I just, I cannot wait until later down the line when we find out how all this was executed because mm-hmm. I mean, really, was he, was he the one that was actually following Kaylee and Maddie on social media or was that created once somebody actually found out the name and people were just following it because like Twitter, you can't find out, you don't know when the, and, the account and, was created. Right. And that, uh, Koffendoffer said like the initial one that was on there of him in the blue shirt that had over 500 uh, uh-huh. dollars. she said that was the initial that she had seen and that they will verify what was on there and what wasn't I think it was her that said that um that they can tell when it was activated who activated it like how it was right activated. but I'm thinking just us in general, we don't know when these accounts were created no. and people are so running, you know, just running with so much. Well, I think it's insane that people are actually changing their name to that and then right? following them. like, that's horrible. And why would you screw with law enforcement? That just goes to show you like how messed up people really are in their minds. Like my first instinct wouldn't be to go run and jump on her social media and put I'm him because you know what you're risking the FBI coming and knocking on your door oh yeah like no thank you <laughs> that's <laughs> that's stupid I mean I think people just don't think just to get clout and to start more rumors and drama it's just it's just insane to me and it's like this case is complicated enough I don't think they need more more crap no. like just let the, you know and people were so judgy against um moscow police department and stuff and they did a phenomenal job phenomenal i mean in 47 days they tracked this guy across country had dna when it was a frat house i mean that's that's in, insane to me that they did it that quickly when we have cases that are you know, years and years old that they don't have this much information on so quickly. Exactly, Brett. And I think anyone that does stuff like that should be charged criminally. So period. do I. So do Every I. Every single one That's of them. tampering with a case. Like, you're, you know, and you want to wonder about their mental health that who would want to do that? To be honest, I'm going to go pretend like I'm the killer of the Idaho Four and be on their Instagram or their whatever it is. Like, that's gross. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Brad, she's actually sitting right behind me on the little couch in my office. <laughs> <laughs> she came over and just chilling. I'm seeing they're saying that there was a TikTok someone recorded live of Brian coming out to be transferred back to the jail. But nobody no nobody said where that was at. Yeah, I don't Brat, get on that. <laughs> she said, Hi Sydney. Hi Sydney. We call her Sydney. <laughs> Oh my gosh. Yeah, no, they're not going to post anything new yet. I mean, we're really all just kind of, everyone's just live waiting on pins and needles. They are going to do a press conference and we are going to live stream that. I don't see anything else. I mean, I can't even imagine making contact with this family. She was probably crying hysterically. Oh, God, yeah. Which is really sad. I truly can't even imagine... Being her Mm -hmm. going through this situation at all. I really can't. 
me, that's yeah. its extent. Mm -mm. And I mean, it's not just like a little, you know, little crime. He brutally stabbed, if allegedly, he brutally stabbed four college students. Right. Just, just yeah. And that's... And you know that that's all it is, is just because. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Because I think... And like other, you know, I've heard other people talking and I, I heard, I listened to Nancy Grace. I know a lot of people don't like her, but I like her. She don't take no crap. And I think that's why I like her. Um, all right. I'm going to share this. Hold up. Give me one second. Um, I'm going to share my screen because I got the TikTok. <laughs> She's so good. I know she is. That's why I, I love her. All right. Let's see here. People are so <laughs> gifts. <laughs> Am I doxing all these people by sharing this? I mean, it's on TikTok, right? Yeah, they're live. It's, a, you know. Stop giving gifts so I can see. So, I mean, it's Stop pretty much me dizzy. I know, me too. I mean, they didn't really see anything. No. You could just see them walking out. And I guarantee you, he's going back to the jail so he can just bye bye. Yeah. He's going to go straight to Idaho. They said they need 10 days. He's going to be out tonight. They are not going to leave him there 10 days. They want him back this week. Oh, it's not. They need 10 days. It's they have 10 within days. 10 days mm -hmm. to be. Yeah. They're going to be there. They're, they're going to be there now. Use, they're not even going to use one day. <laughs> yeah. yeah. They're waiting. Mm hmm They're going to pounce on him like nobody's business. Uh, let's see. Maybe Enton's just getting ready for the presser that he's not tweeting. Because normally he's like a machine. She said, my bad. I checked the wrong. I did the wrong one. I don't <laughs> see any other one in now. I don't, there's no other one in here unless you deleted the other one. Yeah, he's been on Suicide Watch. Is this the new one or did we delete? I don't know if she deleted the other one. Let me just see. No, this is the same one, isn't it? Is there a whole bunch of cowboy hats popping on screen? <laughs> yep. She said she deleted the first one. Well, this one. is the same thing. Cowboy hats jumping on and she's walking and swaying all over. So I think it is the same one. It's just of him watching, walking out. It's like not anything crazy. I'm more like I want to hear this live stream more than anything. And I'm pretty sure everyone's going to be playing it. But I'm going to play it here, even if it's long and boring. We only got 15 minutes. I mean, we may as well stay on for Yep. And then I'll live stream it so that we can have it bigger, too. Well, we I have some people that'll about, watch this later too. I think anyways. it's really just going to be about them going to the house, getting him. He had the hearing, blah blah blah. I mean, what can the police, state police, say there? You know what I mean? And they're just mm -hmm. going to talk about it all and that how they came upon arresting him, and now he's I gotta out. back. I got to mute a minute. All right.
Well, I don't see that, Brat. The one that you have in here. I see him walking out, and then the cowboy hat pops up. Oh, yeah. See, boop, it's up. And then she just kind of walks and sees the ground. I don't see anything else, though. I mean, it literally looks like the other one of him just walking out. Oh, should I play like elevator music while we wait? Do, 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 do. Or like Jeopardy. Do, 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 do. We need a uh, cricket. <laughs> we need a cricket um, sound. We need a soundboard. <laughs> so I can play I cricket noises when we're just sitting here like, oh, what's next? Crickets, crickets. I can put my cricket on. No, <laughs> that's, that's all right. <laughs> we'll let, we don't want your cricket going. Whoop, 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 whoop. Let's see. <laughs> They're laughing. You having a snack? Are you having a snack, Sydney? Oh, right? It's intermission. Go get your popcorn, your drinks, everybody potty. We only have four people in here, and it's probably all of us. Yeah, but I got people that are going to watch it later. And... Do, 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 do. <laughs> we have a countdown. Oh 15 minutes and counting. Um, maybe I'll just share my little pictures again for if anyone comes back later. You think I should or no? It's up to you. You want to. Yeah. Do you find anything else, Brett? Oh, they said he's in critical but stable. That all his stuff is. It was crazy that we were watching that live last night. Who is that? The football player. Oh. Demar Hamlin. We were watching the game, the Bills game last night, and all of a sudden he gets hit and he went to stand up and he got wobbly and went down. And I was like, oh, and then they started doing CPR. And I told Steve, I guarantee you that he just went into cardiac arrest because if you hit somebody just right in their heart when it's at a certain rhythm it instantly stops and they couldn't find a pulse and then they after i know they were working on it for like 10 minutes you could see everyone was crying yes isn't that terrible about jeremy renner snowplow yes he's in critical condition too and i guess he does like all of their plowing all the time they got he lives in um tahoe and they got a crap ton of snow and it ran him over and like mutilated his leg and some other parts. They said he like, thank God his neighbor was a doctor and put a tourniquet and stuff on, but they med flight, they like helicoptered him right out of there. That's terrible. It's terrible. He's the one that's the Marvel. Yeah. He's um what he has. He flies the ship with a little raccoon and. No. Yes. It's Chris Pratt. No, it's this guy. Right here. Look him up. Jeremy. Jeremy. Is it the shooting guy? Hawkeye. Yes. 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 But he's on the same aircraft with them, isn't he? No, it is him. Oh, yeah, Hawkeye. Yeah. I know. It's crazy. And it just started 2023. Like, what in the world? But you know what? I'm just so glad that they got this case done so quick because I don't know if I could have handled all the social media. <laughs> I think I would have left YouTube and not watched anymore because I couldn't take any more theories. I just could not. Like, I was 
I found this one thing last night that I thought was super interesting that was going around on TikTok, all the Russian people they were talking about on TikTok, that this was on like December, it was on, it was in December before he was announced and it said killer is Brian K owner of the GMC truck scene also in video. He left it at park. Order was made by a woman named AM who sent message to Kaylee. If you tell Maddie there will be consequences, she told, and now they paid. What is that? Is that crazy? Did he and have that vehicle? I don't know. It says owner of the GMC truck also in video. Hmm. I sent this to you last night, Brian. <laughs> I don't want to dox this person, so I don't want to share it, but um, unless I could edit it here. Put I it in Slack. I can probably edit it real quick. I'm going to edit it right now because it's on my phone. But it was from TikTok, and it was that Russian source that everyone has okay. been like, yes. talking about. And that they solved this case and like we're helping use Russian stuff. And this was like weeks ago. And they, he, on the live, the guy said that he had shared it with the cops two weeks ago. And they then came out and said they had been following him for two weeks. So it makes you wonder. And then all of a sudden, everyone had to take those things down. I mean, don't quote me on this because I don't want to start stuff that ain't true. But this has just been all over TikTok of them saying, like, but like, who is this? And this is from that. Russian thing they were doing all over TikTok. And now that channel's gone. His channel's gone. Everyone who had videoed it or linked it, they said they were contacted, that they were nicely asked to take them down, but that they could put them back up once it hit mainstream media. So that's alarming. And she said it was initials with three initials that asked them to remove it. So, I mean, FBI, I don't know. But what does that mean? Order? Was Order made. was made by a woman named A.M. I don't know. What was, what's her sister's name? Whose the one, sister? The one that came out. What was her name? I don't remember. Let me see. I'm just curious if anyone knows what her name is. Yeah, initials. Oh. Uh, uh, Don't put uh, her whole yeah. name. <laughs> Brat. <laughs> Get that out of there. <laughs> I can't delete it. Dang it. Special coach. <laughs> I know her name's already out there, but it just freaks me out. Let's see if there's anything new on Enton. What, right now? Just a thing we've seen on TikTok. Okay, he hasn't put anything new, so I'm going to guess they're just going to be setting up for this. Should I see if the live stream is getting ready yet? Sure. All right, let me click on it because it's going to be any minute. Um, right here. Oh, yeah, here, I'm going to stream it. Ready? Yep. All right.
And then I'll make it bigger so that you guys can see. Tell me when I have it like just right. You can actually make it full screen and take us out of it if you want. Mm. I think this is good. It's just gonna, we don't need to see. We're just going to hear them talking. Don't you think? Is that good? It's fine. And we'll just mute while it's playing. Well, can we both mute or will it not play then? I think just one of us will have to mute. I'll mute when it's playing. Here, when it's ready. Because right now there isn't any sound. I don't think. I can't tell. Stop making noise for a minute. Yeah, you can just hear him talking quietly. This is the state police are going to do a press conference. So we're going to just watch it. Huh? Yeah, like probably when, how he was arrested. Like what's the next steps? All that fun jazz. I just don't want to go full screen because isn't that huge? Can you see it full screen? I just feel like that's ginormous. I yeah. can see it on my big computer, so. You I did? Know. I see it. It's okay. huge on my big computer screen. I think it's good size. Do you think it is? A little bit better. You can see it a little bit better. I'm trying to close that, but you can't. I think while that is waiting, I'm going to, oh no, I was going to try to pull up to see what the court thing says, but I'll do that later. You have only got like three minutes. Mm -hmm. Yeah, pretty much. Blah, blah, blah. He's going back. I was trying to hear if I can hear anything. But I can't. What you building over there? The gnome, um, uh, 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 Valentine gnome boxes for the girls for school. Mm. Do you still have it? Oh, yeah, you, you bookmarked it too, Brat. Let me know if there's anything new because I don't want to go out of this. I wonder if anyone will talk from like Idaho or anything in this news conference or if it's just going to be like, I bet you the FBI does because they were part of the task force taking them down, like following him because the FBI can go anywhere. Correct. Yes. It doesn't matter if they're Pennsylvania, Idaho, So I'm going to guess. It's going to be momentarily. Is Noah still in here? Noah, are you ready? This is going to be your first presser on here. <laughs> oh, 
Here we go. Mute. I'm muting you. Good afternoon, everyone. My name is Lieutenant Adam Reed. I'm the Director of the Communications Office with the Pennsylvania State Police. Thank you for joining us here. The order of speakers is going to be our Pennsylvania State Police Commissioner, Colonel Robert Urbanchik, Major Christopher Perez, he's our Area 3 Commander, and First, Assistic, First Assistant District Attorney, Monroe County, Mike Mancuso. After the speakers have finished, we will then take a handful of questions. Colonel Benjik. Good afternoon. I'm Colonel Robert Ivanchik, Commissioner of the Pennsylvania State Police. While I monitored the investigation into the horrific murders of the University of Idaho students, I did not imagine the investigation would lead to the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania. My heart goes out to the families of the victims, their friends, the community of Moscow, and the University of Idaho. No words can heal the pain associated with the loss of a child. Their young lives were ended far too soon. In law enforcement, we understand the best thing we can do for victims and their families is to follow every lead, collect every piece of evidence, and bring those responsible to justice. I am proud of the members of the Pennsylvania State Police who were able to help in this investigation. The cooperative relationship between our local, state, and federal partners stands the test of time. The officers, troopers, and federal agents work together tirelessly, putting in long, difficult hours. Communication and cooperation are imperative to success and to ensure the integrity of the case remains maintained. The culmination of that cooperation ultimately led to take the suspect into custody and afforded the families some sense of peace they deserve. I wanna thank the Moscow Police Department, the Idaho State Police, and our partners in the Federal Bureau of Investigation for their support, assistance, and coordination. I also want to recognize the Monroe County District Attorney's Office. And finally, I need to acknowledge the members of the Pennsylvania State Police, specifically members of Troop N, our Bureau of Criminal Investigation, and our Bureau of Emergency and Special Operations, who assisted in safely taking the suspect into custody in the early morning hours of December 30th. As previously indicated by Chief James Fry of the Moscow Police Department, specific details regarding this investigation cannot be released until the suspect is extradited to Idaho and presented with the probable cause affidavit. At this time, I will turn the microphone over to Major Christopher Paris, commander of Area 3, who was involved in the coordinated efforts to take the suspect into custody. Thank you, Colonel. Uh, Area 3 comprises troops F, P, N, and R, and is made up of 1,000 approximately of the women and men, civilian and enlisted in the northeastern part of uh, Pennsylvania. I'd like to introduce to my left, Captain Norm Kramer, who's the commander of Troop N Hazelton, which is comprised of Carbon, Monroe, Columbia, and parts of Luzerne counties. I would like to reiterate, as the Colonel said, that Idaho law prohibits any release of information contained within the affidavits. Um, so we're going to do our best today to talk about what phase we are currently in in the investigation, and it has entered a new phase with the waiver for extradition, and the continuing primary goal is the seeking of justice through successful prosecution and conviction, bearing the burden of proof, proof beyond a reasonable doubt. So with that in mind, we're trying to balance essentially two things, the public's desire for information against the need to maintain the integrity of the investigation and protect the subjects, suspects, excuse me, uh, accused at this point's due process. So I'll now attempt to give you an operational picture with the best information I can release at the time. So this begins when the Pennsylvania State Police Bureau of Criminal Investigation troopers were contacted by the FBI about assisting with surveillance of the accused in this case. Uh, I'd like to take the opportunity to specifically thank several individuals. 
uh, Special Agent Charge Jackie McGuire and Assistant Special Agent in Charge Dave Carter from the Philadelphia Field Division, as well as Supervisory Special Agent Bill Vigorito of the Scranton RA. Uh, we're very lucky in PSP uh, to have a collaborative relationship with the Bureau, both in Pennsylvania and beyond, and their people are absolutely excellent. So as the investigation progressed, Troop N Criminal Investigation Section, commanded by Captain Kramer over my left shoulder here, began to collaborate with authorities in Idaho. Specifically, I'd like to acknowledge Lieutenant James Curdo, who was here today, Sergeant Anthony Ferdinand, Corporal John Chulock, who is not present with us, and Troopers Leary and Knoll, who are here with us today. Uh, it was through this collaboration and the charges pending in Idaho that uh, those troopers were able to obtain search warrants and a fugitive from justice warrant that was prepared here in Monroe County for the location in Chestnut Hill Township and the Fugitive from Justice Warrant for Mr. Koberger, respectively. I'd like to acknowledge the Monroe County District Attorney, David Christine, as well as First Assistant, Mike Mancuso, and their entire office. The support that we received was absolutely excellent. Once those warrants were obtained, the Bureau of Emergency and Special Operations, BSO, coordinates our Special Emergency Response Team, CERT. They were selected to serve those warrants, the three search warrants and the Fugitive from Justice Warrant. To define what CERT is, it's a full-time tactical team maintained by PSP to deal with high-risk warrant situations, barricades, and other incidents requiring specialized tactical training or other capabilities. From their perspective, we essentially task them to go out and serve a um, arrest warrant for someone accused of a quadruple murder. They're activated several hundred times a year throughout the Commonwealth. We don't typically hear of their work in a forum like this because they serve the warrant, the person's taken into custody, and they go about their, their assignment. They are the ultimate professionals. It's a volunteer team. They're highly trained and highly motivated. Captain Norm Kramer over my left shoulder was assigned as the top com for the CERT activation, which means he was responsible for coordinating our tactical preparations. So tactical assets were then staged in the county, in Monroe County, uh, into the evening of Thursday, December 29th, last Thursday. And in the early hours of Friday, December 30th, those warrants were executed at the location. Mr. Koberger was taken into custody without incident. The scene was turned over to the FBI evidence response team for processing. Mr. Koberger was then turned over to the Monroe County prison where he has remained in their custody since. I'd like to thank the Monroe County Sheriff and the Stroud Regional Police Department for their support as well during the extradition process. Arrangements currently are being made to deliver Koberger back to Idaho, where he can have continued due process and face these charges. So it's with that, I will turn it over to First Assistant, Mike Mancuso. Thank you, Major. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. Um, I'm Mike Mancuso with the DA's office, the First Assistant District Attorney. Uh, I wanna give my uh, condolences to the families of the victims um, out in Idaho uh, for their loss. And it's my sincere hope that uh, this marks a clear step in the right direction of effectuating justice for those folks. Um, my office's role was uh, relatively recent. Uh, we weren't um, advised of the presence uh, of the defendant in our county until um, only a couple days uh, before the apprehension of the defendant. Uh, but when we were told, uh, we came together and worked very closely uh, with uh, Captain uh, Kramer, who did an excellent job in uh, almost like a clockwork operation. Uh, part of uh, my duties um, were to ensure that three separate search warrants uh, were issued. Uh, those affidavits attached to those search warrants are still under seal, so I can't discuss their contents with you. Uh, but one was for the person of uh, Mr. Koberger, uh, collecting DNA and photographs, that sort of thing. One was for the uh, white Elantra vehicle uh, which um, I understand uh, has been seized and uh, is being processed. And one was for the address, the residence itself that he was living in with his family. Um, I was at the scene um, and I have to say um, that uh, uh, Major Paris and uh, Captain uh, Norm Kramer did an outstanding job in coordinating the efforts, not only of the numerous Pennsylvania State uh, Police Troopers there, but um, 
officers from other jurisdictions and disciplines within those jurisdictions to make this a very smooth, highly competent professional operation. Um, it is a, a quirk, apparently. It's uh, not in the norm uh, of the states I'm familiar with that Idaho does not release their probable cause affidavit in support of their arrest warrant until after uh, their defendant is uh, brought or returned to that state. Um, but having uh, read those documents and the uh, sealed affidavits of probable cause, I definitely believe that one of the main reasons the defendant chose to waive extradition and hurry his return back to Idaho was the need to know what was in those documents. Um, so that's a, a significant development. Um, beyond that, looking at the, the scope of the, uh, the situation and the ties this defendant has to my county, um, I uh, would uh, hold our office at the disposal of the Idaho authorities um, to help facilitate a complete uh, background investigation into the defendant, um, both uh, activities prior to the murders occurring within the Commonwealth of Pennsylvania and his activities after the murders in Pennsylvania. So we stand ready to assist with that effort on an ongoing basis. Thank you. We can now open it up for questions. We're not in a position to give you an exact time. It was at some point prior to when the surveillance was, was taken as the investigation progressed to a point where search warrants could be obtained and the probable cause for those search warrants and an arrest warrant, a fugitive from justice warrant based on the arrest warrant out in Idaho were obtained, we began to, to take the tactical steps to plan to serve them. Were you collecting yeah. evidence prior to his arrest? At this point, like we said, it's it's um, very much pertinent to what's in the affidavits, which we cannot speak about. What's it about his demeanor when the arrest actually happened? Present sense impression as likewise ongoing investigation can't discuss. It. Uh, Rob Bank 69 News, how is Coburger being transported back to Those arrangements are being uh, discussed right now, as well as the logistics. The court order says, those of you who heard it today, it's within the next 10 days, so we're currently working on that in coordination with authorities out in Idaho. Sir? I can't comment. I don't know. Is he being held in the Monroe County Jail until he's extradited, or is he removed to another? No, he's, he is lodged in the, he, since he was dropped off there Friday morning. He's resided in Monroe County Prison. Still, until he's Correct. Yes. He'll be there. The or which, which group? At this point, that's still being coordinated between uh, the state police and the authorities out there. Will, we don't know. Will the affidavit be unsealed when he arrives in Idaho? I don't want to speak out of my lane. When I watched the press conference on Friday at 1 p.m. Pacific time, I was alerted to the fact that, in, according to Idaho state law, that the uh, affidavits have to be served in hit to him once he's extradited back before they could be unsealed. How did he say that anyone else has been arrested? Ongoing investigation. Has the motive been determined? I can't comment on that either. I apologize. Who transports himself? Does Pennsylvania State Police, the Monroe County Sheriff's Department? He's presently back. He was transported from the courthouse by Montgomery County, or excuse me, Monroe County uh, Sheriff. And the, the logistics of who's going to transport him out to Idaho are still being discussed. We don't know. Uh, I would say it was in the early morning hours of Friday, December 30th. Uh, tactical assets on scene were probably in the neighborhood of 50. Were you afraid he was going to get tipped off before you got him? I would say overall about this entire operation and the credit goes, you know, this is a part that the state police played humbly. Uh, you look at uh, Moscow Police Department, 38 sworn, um, 19,000 leads, uh, the video evidence that they had to develop in order to uh, put that out, all public source information. But when you talk about the service of a high-risk warrant for someone who's committed or alleged to have committed uh, four homicides, there's nothing routine about that. And all of those tactical steps that were taken uh, were in conjunction with the best efforts of the authorities, local state and federal, both in Idaho and here, to ensure that we could do it safely uh, and to ensure that we could uh, get him into custody and that those service of the search warrants could occur. Sir, can we ask a question of the first assistant?
So you described having read to a degree the contents of that affidavit of probable cause, and that you possibly speculated or theorized that he wanted to get back to read that as well, since he can't read that. Can you give us an indication of the seriousness of what you did? Do? And you can't talk about it, but you can show it as something. Yeah, I can't get into the details, sir, but I, I can say it involved the um, defendant's connection to a scene of a crime consisting of four murdered people. So that's the significance of it. Can you confirm that there is a connection between Brian Hillberger and any of the victims? I can't uh, discuss that. How confident are you uh, that he is guilty of his crimes? That wouldn't be my place to say. Uh, certainly confident enough that um, there was ample probable cause for the issuance of the various warrants in the case. What was your reaction when you heard this? You've all talked about you followed this. This happened states away. When you get that call, or you all get the call, that this person could be right here in your home area. What's your reaction? Well, I was surprised. Really, Monroe County, of all places, um, it hits close to home. I, it's a normal human reaction, I would think, under the circumstances. Do you know when he and his um, father left Idaho or Washington Road, Pennsylvania, what that date was? Um, no, I don't know the exact date. No. Approximately, we understand the middle of December, is that correct? I think that's approximate. And what about, we've heard um, reports that they were stopped not once but twice on the highway. Can you elaborate? I'll defer to um, his Pennsylvania public defender on that. Colbergers connected to other crimes and unsolved mysteries in the area. Uh, I wouldn't uh, answer that question at this time. That would be a normal thing to do. Question for the PSB here: said he was taken without incident. It's safe to say that uh, I shouldn't say it's safe to say, but it seemed like he was expecting. I wouldn't comment on what his present sense was. I would just comment that the professionalism of the CERT team. Uh, and their tactical training definitely proved in a situation like this uh, to do it in the in the most tactically sound uh, and fastest way possible. Was there anybody else in the house at the time? Uh, his parents were in the house at the time. Did they say anything to you? Again, present sense impression. I, I can't comment on that ongoing investigation. Did you was on the door? Uh, force was used. The, the warrants were issued for evening search warrants, which in Pennsylvania requires uh, additional probable cause in order to serve them at, at uh, the hours of darkness. I would defer to the first assistant to talk about the legal burden that you bear in order to obtain those. But from a tactical standpoint, based upon all of the briefings that we had uh, developed and all of the intelligence we had developed, we thought that was the best time to serve it. And what tipped off that um, Pennsylvania was involved with this? Uh, they were alerted by, by the FBI. Troopers in the Bureau of Criminal Investigation were alerted. Anything on like, his social media pages that tip that thing? I can't comment. I don't know. Can't comment. Ongoing, like I said. State police's role here was uh, to serve the warrants and assist with the surveillance, which we've done. Um, we've been part of major investigations. You know, these are men and women who uh, take an oath to protect their communities and the Commonwealth here. We're very humbled with the opportunity that we had, uh, given a case that has really gained international attention, to, to play a small part in it. And our hat is off to uh, Moscow PD again with the the size and the complexity of this investigation and the work that they've done to get us here today. And this is only the beginning of the next step. If it's determined that anyone here in Pennsylvania either help to conceal or dispose of any evidence, then you would be a part of this case or would it go? I would say that we would pledge whatever support we can for ongoing investigations with the Idaho authorities here in Pennsylvania. Absolutely. We would help them in any way we could. Were there any weapons found in the house? I don't want to get into what was actually seized in the, in the house pursuant to the evidentiary nature of it. Any insight into why you all decided to go in overnight to make the uh, Those are tactical decisions in terms of base surveillance. Uh, I don't want to give out too many uh, tactical uh, factors that go into that situation, but obviously surveillance was conducted and we wanted to go in at a time when we thought it would be the safest for everybody, safest for anybody else in the house, safest for um, Mr. Koberger, and safest for our people. There was an interesting question asked earlier about the uh, the care that needed to be taken to not tip uh, the the suspect off. Could you describe um, how how long that lid had to be on things and how many people were were um, involved in it? Like how many people knew and for how long? So I would say 
I would answer the question this way. I, I don't want to get into a timeline in terms of when we were notified by the FBI and when the surveillance began. Obviously, we know on Thursday night into Friday morning is when the, um, the warrants were served. Uh, I would say, as a credit to the professionals, both standing behind me and others not here, many others not here, uh, the information was held very close. Uh, and we did not want to have any situation where uh, Mr. Koberger potentially would be tipped off. So as a result of that, I would say a close number of approximately seven to eight uh, individuals, maybe 10 on the most within the PSP side of this operation knew about it. And for, for days, can we say? Or? I would say for a period of time. I would, I would not feel comfortable yeah. commenting any more than that for a period of time. And then as the tactical assets were, were brought in, people were briefed. When the movement plan is finally decided, will there be an announcement? Will uh, Not from the state police. So we're, we would defer to uh, Moscow and the, uh, the authorities in Idaho. Starts leaving Pennsylvania. Well, we have security concerns now, obviously, to move any prisoner. Anytime you move somebody from a secure prison to another place, uh, we don't want to. There won't be an announcement from the state police in terms of those logistics, but they're being worked on right now. Can you give us your best guess when you think he might be moved roughly you know, tomorrow? We would like to do it as soon as possible, but the court order says 10 days. We have 10 days to coordinate it. Can you tell me on a plane tonight? Is it possible he could be on a plane tonight? That's a possibility, right? I can't. I would think that's a, that's probably not likely. Privately, uh, we're looking into that right now. Can you confirm or deny that a window was broken or gain access into the home? Uh, there were multiple windows that were broken, I believe, to, to gain access as well as multiple doors. I think the uh, video of the, the house after the fact confirms that. And that would all be part of the tactical plan based on the floor plan of the house, et cetera, and what the uh, CERT operators would do to serve those warrants. Was this suspect on your radar before, and are you looking at any connections? I wouldn't comment on that based on the ongoing nature. How about his the criminal past? According to the UJS, I didn't see anything. Can't comment on, on, a, on a person's criminal history during an agro investigation. Well, uh, Mr. Mancuso said that uh, you stand ready to assist in giving the complete background to the defendant. What specifically is law enforcement interested in? That'll be the last question after Mr. Mancuso answered. Um, in any uh, case of this nature, um, and I've prosecuted a fair share of, of homicides, double homicides, that sort of thing. Um, you, you want to look at any evidence of possible motive. You want to look at any evidence of a, of a pattern uh, of modus operandi or method. Um, you want to get um, into the um, subject's uh, character, mental state to the best you can, um, that sort of thing. So it'll be an all-encompassing effort, uh, which we stand ready for. We have our ways. Okay, thank you. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks, everyone. Just for a quick spelling, I'll give it. Interesting. I'm going to just see if there's anything new on Brian, and then I'm going to share his new document, and then we will go. Yeah, they're uh, they're going to move him, like, now. It wouldn't uh, surprise me if during the whole thing they were in the process of moving him. So Brian Enton said, just now got the body cam video from the traffic stop involving Brian Kohlberger and his dad while they were driving through Indiana. We'll play it live on News Nation. So if you guys want to check that out, they are going to have the body cam footage of when they pulled him over um, on their way out there. Because I know they pulled him out twice. And then he also tweeted, um, he is back at the Moron County Pennsylvania jail judge says he has to be moved to Idaho within 10 days. So that's that on that. And then I will share this new document. I don't know if it says what it says. It just says um, completed and waiting extradition. So that's all the court document says completed and awaiting extradition. So I think that sums it up. Um, if you guys want to go watch News Nation at five, so that would be, I'm going to guess, four o'clock our time, maybe. Um, they are going to be updating uh, the new body cam footage. So maybe on our next live, we can share that as well. But thanks for everybody for coming. Um, we appreciate it.
I'm going to just play this disclaimer again because I don't want to take any chances. And <laughs> thanks, everybody. And we will see Thank you, you on our next live. Thanks so much. Bye.